Well, it felt like a Mack truck hit the side of the aircraft. That's how Captain Tammy Jo Schultz described the scene when her plane's engine suddenly went up in flames. At that moment, the lives of more than 140 passengers were in the hands of a pilot who'd been told she'd never be able to fly. On April 17, 2018, 20 minutes after Southwest Airlines Flight 1380 took off, Captain Tammy Jo Schultz experienced a catastrophic engine failure, which caused an explosion that severely crippled the aircraft. The rapid depressurization made it difficult to see, hear, and breathe at times. But Tammy Jo and her crew remained calm. She relied on her faith and her years of extensive training as a former Navy aviator to gain control of the Boeing 737. In her memoir, Nerves of Steel, Tammy Jo shares how she followed her dreams earned her wings, and safely landed Southwest Airlines Flight 1380. Please welcome to the 700 Club, the hero of Flight 1380, Tammy Jo Schultz. It's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. If you had to guess, how many times in your life were you told girls don't fly? Oh, a number of times by people who could who could make it happen or not. Yes, but which was really, I think, the part of it that became discouraging after a while. There was a window of time where, even though that had been your dream, you kind of set that aside based on all of the negatives you'd heard. What happened that changed and brought you back into path with your original dream? Well, part of it was just seeing a woman getting her wings in, the, in a, a class there at Vance Air Force Base. And I realized, okay, they said that <laughs> girls don't fly, but I'm, I'm seeing it. So after talking to her and realizing, okay, there is a way under the fence and I'm gonna find it. Even in your attempts to go into the military and to become a pilot, you were told all along the way that that wasn't possible. You finally go into the Navy to do this. Did you, did you have a lot of discrimination along the way? Tell me about what happened. Well, I think when, I mean, I was the only female in my squadron for the first three squadrons in two years. So, of course, if you're a green apple in a bushel of red, you can sometimes garner yeah. more attention than you would like. And um, I served with some incredible men, prince among men, uh, and great aviators. But, of course, every once in a while there would be yeah. someone who thought that... Um, they didn't want to be challenged by a girl doing the same thing they were doing and made life a little tough. The, the hard part about that in reading your book, I, I felt so frustrated for you, was you could have spoken up about those things, but you would have had to live with even greater repercussion mm -hmm. after the fact. So you just kind of decided to tough it out. That had to be difficult and miserable. Well, you know, I mean, the things we learn at home sometimes serve us well throughout life. Isn't and that the one truth? of the things that, that my parents, especially my mom, said was, tell God on them. I mean, get on your knees and just tattle. <laughs> and then when you finish, pray for them. Yeah. And, and then review. What, are, you, are you meeting resistance because it's not a wise thing to do? Or, you know, what's your motive and yeah. what's your merit? Mm -hmm. And so I would compare my motive to theirs and feel like mine was more noble. Exactly. And, and, um, and just let the Lord handle that and move on. Yeah. Study harder, move on. Be better, exactly. Yeah. And God often uses those hard things in our lives to hone us. And oh, I think so. To prepare us. It made you do more, go farther, be better. So let's go back to last April and what actually happened in that Southwest flight that you were commandeering. Let's yeah. talk about, you had 140 some people on board. Yes, 149. And just about the time as you took off that most pilots are kind of, you know, loosening the tie a little bit and sitting back and saying, we made it, we're up, we're at, you were at 32,000 some feet in right. the air. What happened? Well, Darren Ellis are my first officer, and I both thought we'd been hit by another aircraft that we'd had wow. in a midair because the jolt was so violent. And the aircraft went into a snap roll to the left, and we both caught it and leveled the wings. And, and then just as quickly, uh, there was suddenly such a shuddering of the aircraft and a roar through the aircraft that we couldn't focus our eyes on anything. We couldn't hear each other, and then we couldn't breathe. And so uh, 
that was the beginning. <laughs> so how did you gather your wits about you, Tammy Jo, to figure out what to do next? Smoke filled the cabin at one point? I mean, you right. can't even see the instruments, much to, less decide what you're going to do. You right. can't speak, as you said, to the co-pilot. So how did you communicate with the, each other and how did you decide what to do next? Well, it, it, being isolated like that, adrenaline kicks in. And I remember thinking, good news, bad news. And the bad news was I didn't think everything would stay on the aircraft for us to get it to the ground. And that kind of led me to the, the mental cliff of what if, which would be this would be the day that I meet my maker. And that's when I stopped. The rush stopped and I just had a calm because I realized I wouldn't be meeting a stranger that I meet with him every day. And so uh, that is where I stepped away with a calm in my heart that I think was reflected in my voice, but also in just being able to think through the many decisions that Darren and I needed to make to get to the runway in Philadelphia. They were layers deep and they had to keep changing with the circumstances. Yes. What had actually happened that caused all of this? Well, and we just dealt with the, the symptoms for a while. What we didn't know had happened was the number one engine had exploded and, and then shredded the the cowling back Good. so that it stayed attached kind of like a banana peeling and it was flailing in 500 mile an hour wind. It had also taken chunks out of the leading edge and damaged a window which had blown out and so that caused the roar, that caused the rapid depressurization. There was also just an unscripted combination of emergencies that ensued. Hydraulic lines were cut, fuel lines were cut and, and so we were dealing with drag that we hadn't ever practiced dealing with wow. and and then getting closer to the ground we realized we didn't have level off capability that the thrust from the good engine wasn't uh, all ours to use how did so. you land this thing um very carefully yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and 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 truthfully with with layers of experience and and training and I've I've been asked every once in a while if I felt like the Lord landed the plane and I said no he had prepared me for years he's been pouring <laughs> into me for years to take care of that what are the three takeaways you want people to get from your book nerves of steel I would say it would be habits heroes and hope mm -hmm. habits being uh, what we choose as a habit on a you good day. You meet with the Lord every day and you pray before every flight. Uh, probably my most important habit of, <laughs> of life. <laughs> yes. And and those are instincts mm -hmm. in, in a bad day. And we have that generous gift of choice. Heroes, uh, no title, no equipment required, just taking the time to see and the effort to act on behalf of someone else. Yeah. And last but most important, hope. Um, when we had a plan and a destination and and communicated that it gave our flight attendants and passengers hope and uh, you said over the loudspeaker we're not going down we're going to philadelphia <laughs> right right and and i think that you know having a destination whether it's in an airplane that's a rough rough ride mm -hmm. or in life mm -hmm. that that element of a destination doesn't have to change our circumstances mm -hmm. it changes us and that's enough it's a gripping story. Nerves of Steel is her brand new book. I want to mention also there's a Nerves of Steel coming out for young people. Oh, yes. In September, right? My heart is or, wrapped around that one. When is this one out? Is it's it? the same thing. It's got a few more stories than what the Nerves of Steel does. They're shorter chapters, but it was junior high and a junior book that put my path on uh, the feet, uh, my feet on the path to aviation. Get it for your school library, folks. Tammy Joe, thank you for being on the program. What an amazing story. Oh, thank you. Bless you.